Hello and welcome to part 39 of my video series on how to use Blender 2.6. In this video I'm going to be talking about how to do physics simulation right inside of Blender. Now if you think back to my tutorial on number 15.5 and I believe number 14 before that, I talked about how to do physics simulation with incorporated animation using the Blender game engine. Well as of Blender 2.66, and as you can see here, I'm using 2.66a, which just came out yesterday on March 7th. Um, they actually integrated bullet physics physics into the actual Blender render engine or the normal Blender interface. So we no longer have to do all of those extra steps to get a physics simulation with rigid or solid objects inside of a Blender animation. So this makes the whole process a lot easier and I wanna cover the basics of it today. So you'll need Blender 2.66 uh, or newer uh, to follow along. So to get started, I'm gonna click on my uh, little uh, picture here and we'll get started. Um, for this, I'm gonna make the same domino scene that we created in my tutorial number 14 and 15.5. So I'm gonna use my scale gizmo down here and I'm gonna scale uh, a, to make a, my cube to make a domino rather. And so I'm gonna scale it from the front and back and then up top. So we have a nice, oops, maybe that's a little bit too tall, a domino shape. Now, here's the thing about when you scale an object. When you scale an object, it still remembers its original size. And this is true when you do any box modeling. In other words, when you press tab to go into edit mode and you do any changes to the model, it still remembers kind of what original size that original cube or the original face should have been if you've modeled starting from a face or a cube. You can tell this if you press the N key with your mouse in the 3D viewport, which brings up your properties panel over here. You can see the scale section over here. And because I made it narrower and, uh, and thinner and a little bit taller, you'll see over here under my scale section, it, it shows that it's only 0 0.630 of its width and only 0 0.2 of its original um, thickness. And then it's taller on the Z axis than it, or the Z axis that it used to be. Um, and this is actually a problem for a few things. I've had a few comments over the last few months about um, UV mapping and the scale of an object. Well, turns out that in Blender, if you unwrap an object to add a material to it, or if you want to use this new physics engine, you have to apply this scale before you can do anything else. To apply a scale, I believe it is Control A. Yeah, it's Control A. And then the one that I always pick is rotation and scale. And what this does is it takes however you scaled uh, or rotated an object and it makes that the new kind of default rotation for that object. So control A and rotation and scale. And now as you can see, the scale of that object gets reset to one, one, one. So it thinks of this as the um, natural size for this object. I'm gonna go ahead and press N to hide that side panel again. We'll go ahead and move the domino up, and so it's above the ground. I'm gonna go and press one, and then five to go to my front view. Actually, I'll go to my side view with three. I'll go ahead and turn on my um, screencast key so you can see what keys I'm pressing down here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on rigid body physics for this domino. To do that, it's actually now over here in my tool shelf. If you don't have that up, you can press the T key and it'll be at the bottom. Now, there are kind of a few sections here. Um, there is a kind of a permanent section at the bottom of the tool shelf, and you can drag the edge of that down to hide it. And you'll notice that once you hide it, it there becomes a little plus icon there. So to get that section back, uh, which can be important sometimes, you just press the little plus. There is a new section with Blender, Blender, Blender 2.66, and that is rigid body tools. Um, if you open that up, you can see that with any mesh selected, you have the ability to add rigid body, which means solid object, um, or make that object active as a rigid body for physics. So there are two kinds of rigid body objects. There are active objects and there are passive objects. Um, passive objects are objects that are not affected by gravity at all. In your scene by default, uh, under your world tab, you will be able to find, I believe it's under the world tab, although it could be under the scene tab. Yeah, it's under the scene tab, gravity. And if you've taken any high school physics, you'll know that gravity works at a rate of 9.8 
meters per second squared approximately, and so that's why you see that 9.8 or negative 9.8 on the z-axis, which is pushing you down at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, so passive objects do not are not affected by gravity, but they act as collision objects. So like the ground, which doesn't fall down, hopefully, would be a passive object, but a domino would be an active object because it's an object that can fall down. So I'm gonna, with the, with the domino selected, I'm gonna press active, and now it is a active object. If I press Alt A, or, which is the same thing as the play button, Alt A is play, my domino will fall straight down. Now, obviously there's no floor there. I pressed escape to get out of that play. Um, there's no floor there, so let's go ahead and add a floor. Of course, whenever you wanna add a new object, you have to know where your 3D cursor is, and if you press Shift C, that'll bring your 3D cursor back to the middle of your scene on the ground or what it, this ground plane. So let's go ahead and go to add and mesh and plane. And there is my default plane. And we're gonna scale it up with the S key and then drag your mouse out of course and clicking to make it a little bit bigger. Now again, we have scaled this ground. And in fact, I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna use my scale gizmo and we're gonna make it nice and long and maybe move it over a little bit. We have scaled the ground, which means we need to apply the scale of this ground before we can actually use it as a part of the physics simulation. So just to show you that, I'm gonna press the N key again to bring up the, um, the, the scale. And as you can see, it's scaled 20 times on the X axis, which is the red axis. And on the Y axis, it's scaled 35 times. It's not scaled on the Z axis because it's not a, two, it's not a 3D object, it's only a 2D object. So we're gonna have to press Control A and apply the rotation and scale. We didn't really have to do rotation in that case, but I always just use rotation and scale. So we're gonna, with this floor selected, we're gonna say add passive over here under rigid body tools. Uh, and it's now a rigid body. So if I press Alt A, you're gonna see the domino fall and hit the ground, and it's gonna kind of teeter back and forth. Now, depending on this, uh, the speed of your computer, it'll show at a different rate and how complex your model is as well. Um, now, an important thing is that when you press play, once you've made a, a rigid body object, you're gonna see this kind of yellowy, orangey line at the bottom of your timeline. And that is the cache, which means the, the stored memory of the simulation that you just ran. So if you scrub along, which means left click and drag this green bar along, you're gonna see the simulation happen. So if I drag along, I, drag along, I can see the uh, domino kind of falling and swaying a little bit there. Um, and that cache gets rewritten every time you start from the be beginning and simulate again, or it gets rewritten if you change anything in your scene. Um, and we're gonna talk about how to bake that, which means make it into keyframes, or at least make it permanent. There's a couple ways to do it. Uh, in a moment. But first, I'm going to take this domino and I'm going to duplicate it. So I'm gonna to go to my side view, which is the three key. And if you're in perspective, you'll need to press five. And I'm gonna press Shift D to duplicate and then press Y. So it only goes side to side. Let's select both of those, Shift D and then Y and duplicate those. We're making a simple domino scene here. So Shift D and Y and then make sure to space them out evenly. I'll get rid of my my uh, properties panel there. And let's make, we've got eight here. I'll duplicate all of those. And so we have 16 in total. Now, this is pretty much exactly how we did it uh, in the last time I talked about physics. We made a bunch of dominoes in a row, except in that video we were using the Blender game engine to do the actual simulation. And if you remember back, we had to actually use the logic editor, uh, which I'm just gonna change my um, my timeline to. So I'm gonna have to switch to my Blender game engine. Now, of course, we don't have to do this now. I just wanna kind of give you a refresher of what we talked about. This was the node editor, rather, or the logic node editor, uh, where we could add nodes to different objects for the purpose of controlling something in a game or having logic in a game. Um, but now we don't have to do any of that, which is super nice, and it's a nice addition to Blender. So, I am actually going to, now that we have our dominoes set up, I'm gonna split my timeline in two, so I can make it a little bit taller. And we're gonna make, uh, with this second window, 
a dope sheet. A dope sheet is kind of like a super timeline. Uh, it allows us to um, actually edit and delete and kind of scale keyframes to make an animation longer or shorter. So I have all my 16 dominoes set up, but now we need a object, uh, a finger, to push the dominoes over. If you think back to my last 14 and number 15.5 videos, you'll know that I made a, a finger, uh, quote unquote, finger object that I called pushy cube or something like that. Um, in this case, I'm just going to make a cube and we'll go ahead and scale that down and then scale it on the Y axis. So I pressed S and then Y. And let's go make sure those line up. Yes, they do. And so now we're going to animate it. So I'm going to turn on my um, record button there. And on frame zero, I want it to be right there. So I could either just kind of rock it back and forth to make a new keyframe. Uh, or I could have pressed I and insert a location keyframe. I means insert keyframe. Let's go to frame. I'm going to zoom in here and kind of pan over uh, frame 20. And let's insert with the I key in another location frame. And then on frame 30, we're going to go and move it right there. And because we have this record button turned on, it'll make a keyframe for that keyframe or for that uh, movement rather. And then we'll go to frame 40 and move this back. And I think that'll do it. Let's take a look at our animation. Now, because this finger or this cube that I'm acting or getting to act as my finger is interacting with the physics objects, it needs to have a, uh, an, a passive rather um, physics type. So a rigid body, a passive a rigid body type set to it. And I believe under the physics tab, so I'm gonna make this side panel a little bit wider, we need to change it to have animation turned on. This finger uh, under the physics tab up here in the properties window needs to have this animated button checked. Otherwise, it will not use this animation that I've recorded as a part of my scene. So I'm gonna go back to frame zero and we are going to press Alt A or the play button in the timeline, but actually I'm gonna turn off my record first before I press play. Let's go ahead and press Alt A. Oops, all of the uh, some of the dominoes fell down because the ground is not over there. That's important to do, obviously. And I don't think I applied the scale on my finger, so I'm going to do that. Control A, rotation and scale, and maybe you'll move this over a little bit so that it doesn't fall off the edge. Let's go ahead and press Alt A to try this out. And my dominoes fall over. Something strange did happen though, and I'm going to check that out in a second. My, it looks like my um, finger did a stretch in some strange way as soon as I pressed play. Let's check that out. I'm not really sure what happened there. It looks smaller than it used to be. I'm not sure, but we'll live with it for now. Uh, but as you can see, my, uh, my simulation worked all the dominoes have fallen over. And as you can also see, uh, if we have just one of our objects selected, we can see this kind of uh, orange-yellow cache line that shows beneath the length of the animation that I simulated. I only let it play from frame zero to frame 180 something right there. And if I try to go past that, the simulation won't work properly or it'll try to simulate as I go. But now we have the simulation and if I saved and quit, um, I would likely guess that the this cache would disappear because this is only supposed to be a temporary uh, memory of what happened in the physics simulation. To make this simulation permanent, we have to do one of two things. We have to turn all of the simulation into keyframes, in other words, bake it to keyframes, or we can bake this uh, cache into the file. Now, if you've watched my videos on cloth simulation, you'll know that this is very similar of a, of a principle where we had a purple line for cloth simulation and you could bake that uh, in memory so that you would just have it in your simulation and it would stay looking like this. You wouldn't actually get keyframes uh, with cloth, but you could bake this cache into the file. Uh, but with physics simulation, you have the option to do it like that, just to bake this simulation or to actually bake it to keyframes. And that's kind of the more, um, 
workable option because then you can go ahead and edit the keyframes just like you would with your own animation later on. So we're gonna do it that way, but I'll show you both ways right away. If you have one of the dominoes selected and you go over here to your world tab, you're gonna be able to scroll down and is it the world tab or the scene tab? It is the scene tab. I get those two confused sometimes with some things. You have two sections, actually three sections. You have the rigid body world, and then you have a rigid body cache, which is what we're talking about right now, the cache, and you have a rigid body field weights. We're not gonna talk about that in this video, but as you can see under rigid body cache, we have this bake button. And if we press that, it's gonna change the color to a slightly darker color for that object. And I believe it did all of the objects at once. So now I should be able to save. Uh, don't take my word on it, actually try it for yourself. Um, save this file and close it and reopen it and it should remember the simulation. But I'm actually gonna press free bake because I don't wanna do it this way. I wanna leave the, the cache the way it is and I'm gonna select all of these objects now, at least all of my um, active objects that have simulation cache applied to them. In other words, all of my dominoes. And we're gonna make the simulation, we're gonna bake the simulation into keyframes. And the way you do that is on your tool shelf over here, you're going to press the button that says bake to keyframes. And all the buttons over here, by the way, do apply to all of the objects you have selected. So you can have multiple objects selected. Over here under your physics um, buttons, if you edit anything in here, um, you have to do it one object at a time as far as I'm aware. So with all my dominoes selected, I'm gonna press bake to keyframes and it's gonna let you set the start and end frames. We only went to frame, actually I think we did go to 250, I believe, so we'll press okay. We have a start frame, which is one, an end frame, and if you go uh, out of the bounds from which you simulated before, it's gonna to have to recalculate it, I would, I would assume. Let's go ahead and press okay. And it now turned all of my data from my cache into keyframes, and so if I selected just one of the dominoes, you can see all of these keyframes, and in my dope sheet, you can see all of these keyframes um, for that domino. Now, this ends up having a lot of data in your file. In other words, even if it doesn't need all of these keyframes in here, like this domino is standing still right now, and it's standing still for, throughout all of this, so there's no reason really for there to be all of these keyframes. Um, so what we can do is we can use an add-in in Blender to make um, all of the dominoes, uh, all the keyframes of the dominoes be simplified. The way we do that is you actually have to enable this add-on. So you have to go up to File and User Preferences and over to Add-ons. And then if you do a search for Simplify, you're gonna see it and it's called Add Curve Simplify Curves. And if you check this or click on this little arrow, it'll tell you where to find it once you add it to the interface. And the only way you can actually use this add-on is by searching for it using the search tool. So I'll talk about that. You have to click this little um, checkbox and then you can press save user settings and then you can close this preferences window. I already had it um, added. So all I have to do now is with one of the dominoes selected is press my space bar for search and I'm gonna type simp and it'll be there. And I just have to click on it and now I can start simplifying my curves. Where you find this is under the bottom of your tool shelf here. And again, that comes down to your little plus here, which has hidden that bottom section. So I'm gonna click on that little plus, and now you see the little um, panel for simplify F curves. The error right now is at zero, which means it hasn't simplified this domino's uh, keyframes at all. But as soon as I start turning this up, you're gonna see a lot fewer keyframes, and it's very sensitive, in fact, the only way to use this really well is to tr use this by typing in a number. I find the number that I like is 0 0.015 uh, and I'll press enter so you can see what the keyframes look like. As you can see now with error 0 0.015 on that domino, there are only a few keyframes at the beginning and there's a whole long gap and then some keyframes in the middle end section and at the end. And the reason why that is is because the domino is only moving in those sections. The dominoes actually all fall down at the beginning and they kind of shake around for, the, for a few frames as they land on the ground. 
but then it's totally still, and so there's no re need, need for keyframes there. So, and then when it falls over, obviously it needs keyframes, so that's when it gets hit and by the other dominoes and gets fall, uh, falls over. So let's go to the next domino, uh, select it. You see it has all of its keyframes still. We have to press the space bar again. It remembers our last selection, so I can just press enter. And you might be wondering why nothing disappeared here, why it still has all of its original keyframes, even though there still says an arrow of 0.015. What I found is that you need to click on one of the arrows and then go back. So you can click um, right and then left or just type in 0.015 again and then press enter and it'll fix this one as well. So you have to go through all of them unfortunately. Um, Spacebar, enter, left, right, and then go to the next one. Spacebar, enter, left, right. And we're just gonna go through them all really quickly. Zero point zero one five, and I'm actually not going to finish all of those, but I think you get the idea. I'm going to go ahead and save this to my uh, desktop. And we'll call it dominoes.blend. And we'll save as Blender file. And there we have it. So if I go back to the beginning, I didn't simplify all the curves and you will want to but I have my animation of dominoes falling. If I go ahead and render this out, it'll play at a more realistic speed. As you can see, it's only playing at eight or nine frames per second right now, although I have my render output to 24 frames per second, I believe, yeah, right there. So that will work. Until next time, I'll see you then.